I haven't seen this much rain in years. Years. Not since Hurricane Grey, and you should have heard the wind last night. I always keep Bo in the barn on bad weather nights, but this one came out of nowhere. Completely unexpected. I fell out of bed when a branch struck my window around midnight. It sounded like someone hit it with a bat, it gave me a heart attack. I raced into the rain with my shoes halfway on on a mission to get Bo into the barn. The dogs thought they wanted to come with, but ducked back inside after seeing what I was getting myself into. I didn't mind, I only meant to be out half an hour at most. Besides, I don't have the brain space to keep track of the dogs while I'm tunnel vision worried about my horse. If one of the older trees were to fall, it could very well break the pasture fence, and in a storm like this, anything could happen. Bo was already huddled in the barn when I got there. Good boy, smart boy. Thank goodness. You try to find a black horse in the middle of a night like this, it's a hunt for a ghost. I had to wrestle with the barn doors to close us in, but once they were, now what? Go back into that? No way, nah. -uh. To delay my inevitable walk back, like any sensible person, I made myself busy. Organized my tack box and straightened up the lockers. Found my missing sweater, sandwiched between two saddle pads, and here, check out this photo I found from our first day here. Crazy how I'm already nostalgic for something that happened three weeks ago. As it got later and later into the night, I had to make a decision. I could walk all the way back to the house in a dark, torrential downpour, or I could sleep in the hayloft. I slept in the hayloft. Maybe this whole live in a dense remote forest all on my own to rebuild my life plan was not the greatest decision I've ever made. And neither was building my cabin a mile away from the barn, but I didn't exactly take all factors into account. Look, I've never considered myself to be someone who's scared of the dark. And then I moved here, and now? Yeah. In my defense, this is the darkest dark I've ever seen. My dogs are a reliable way of telling whether something is there or not, but like now, I can't always have them with me. I have other rules to keep myself sane. Don't look past the tree line. The rustling in the bushes is a squirrel, and if you hear someone call your name, no you don't. Come morning, I got to scope out the level of damage the wind had left for me to clean up. By now, the storm had passed and left a steady rain in its wake. On our patrol, Bo kept himself very busy being mad. He didn't love being wet, and I wouldn't let him run through the mud. All our buildings are intact, and the worst of the debris is a few broken branches. To my surprise, there are no fallen trees, which is excellent news. They take a couple hours to move, and I haven't the time because I've got my first job today. Isn't that exciting? In three hours. Three hours until Bo and I ride out to meet with our first client on a small farm down the road called Goosefeather Fields. The lady I spoke to didn't give too many details over the phone, just that she'd like to schedule a consultation with me so we can talk financials. I'm hopeful that by some miracle they've heard of me as the new architect in town and not the amateur the papers claim I am. So, after everyone's breakfast, I need to change clothes, grab some paperwork from my office, tack up, and ride out. Would you look at this? Such an adorable little farmhouse, and those must be the pastures for the horses. I love that you can see them from inside the house, and back there, it looks like they lost a building in a fire. A pretty big one at that. My client briefly mentioned needing a larger build. I reckon she'll ask me to construct a new barn for them. Hi, I'm Red, here for the consult. The lady I met with is a younger woman named Cadence Hartzler. Her and her husband bought the property a couple months ago with the intent to raise geese, start a garden, and work with a couple horses. She found out about me through the news, but not through the paper. Get this. The journalist who wrote it is her older brother. As I was ready to jump through her kitchen window, she sat me down with a cup of tea at cup of really good tea to explain the whole situation. Now, I'm new in town, so I didn't know this, but the local press is famous for exaggerated gossip. Not a lot happens here, so they twist and they warp innocent stories into convoluted fables, all for a headline that sells. Cadence apologized on behalf of her brother, who felt sorry for the situation it put me in, but needed to act as he did under the supervision of his boss, lest he lose his job. While on a visit with her brother's family, Cadence mentioned that her house was struggling to feel like a home without her horses, but couldn't have them at home without a proper barn. He had showed her the photos of my workshop, and even recommended me, despite what he wrote, to right his wrong. She saw potential in my work, and preferred to support a local builder as opposed to one that she initially planned on contacting. They live three hours away. She called me that night, and to think, I almost didn't pick up the phone. 
Neither of us minded the rain. She took me for a walk around the house, showed me where her geese were raised, toured the pastures, and let me examine the charred barn foundations. Once we were done, I had a good list put together of all the features she requested I take care of. I'd need to get rid of the old tractor, cut down the weeds around the main areas of traffic, deal with the two fallen pines, and clear out the debris left from the barn fire. While we were checking out the area where her geese are sheltered, Cadence mentioned having an issue with foxes attacking the flock. Her husband was looking to get a livestock guardian dog to protect them and hopefully prevent any future incidents. In preparation for this, Cadence asked if I could put together a sizable doghouse next to the house. Lastly, and quite possibly the most exciting, it's been requested that I design and construct a three-stall horse barn over the stone foundations of the previous barn. I am, to the best of my ability, to try to match the style of their current house to maintain cohesiveness over the whole property. At this point, I'm already chock full of ideas, I'm excited to get to the drawing board, and I'm going to need to organize a long order list for my supplier. Right now, Cadence is boarding her horses at a nearby barn, and her husband gets home from a business trip in three weeks' time. His company has him stationed up north to oversee a mining operation, and, as a surprise, Cadence hopes to have the renovations complete before he gets back home. That gives me three weeks from today to get everything done. I'm doing everything I can think of to make sure this job goes smoothly. This might be the only second chance I get and there's no way I'm letting it go to waste. My first day on the job, my first official job, and I am excited. I have the grandiose vision of an artist who has fallen completely in love with her craft and the energy of a caffeinated squirrel. Why am I unsupervised? We arrived to Goose Feather Fields as early as we dared. I needed an ambitious start to settle into the project. If everything goes according to plan, all these weeds will be cut down and carted away by day's end. If everything goes according to plan. Three hours in, my shears break, no matter. I have a spare at home. We need to take the trip back anyways as I've filled the cart. I bring back all of the eco-waste I pick up from jobs to pile on my own property. Then a couple times a year, I'll call a facility in town that can have it composted and turned into mulch. Hi, Sable. Hi, Blue. No, I'm not home early, just stopping by to grab some things. Wanna help me find my branch shears? They should be in the workshop. Hang tight, Bo. I'll just be a minute. Not there. Not there. Not there. In here? No. I guess they could be in the barn, but I just organized my tools in there a couple nights ago. Oh, oh, I remember. I used them to help clean up the trails after the storm we had. I must have left them outside. Aha! I knew it. I'll take those. Whoa, whoa, settle. Blue. What's wrong? There are footprints. They look like mine. They're about the same size, but my work shoes have a different texture. Maybe I was wearing my riding boots when I made these? Hmm. I'll have to check on this again later. I've wasted enough time trying to find these shears. Keep an eye out, guys. I'll be back for dinner. I'm sure the prints are mine. I'm sure of it. And I trust my dogs to man the fort while I'm gone. There's... Nothing I need to worry about. I spend the rest of the day at the Hartzlers clearing weeds. Every time I fill the cart, I get a nice break taking it back, and Bo gets a break in between trips while I work to fill it again. Cadence has taken great care to make sure he's comfortable in his temporary shelter. Even though I'm wary about strangers around Bo, I let it. I can tell that she misses her ponies, but that's what we're working for here, to bring them home. By the end of the day, the lawn is already looking so much cleaner. Once I can get this tractor out of here and deal with the two felled trees, we're golden. I'm trying not to get too excited. It's only the first day, so I can't exactly say I've pulled ahead of schedule yet, but I think I'm on the right path to pulling ahead of schedule. After a perfect night's sleep, Bo and I are back on the field to deal with this hunk of scrap metal. I start excavating around the wheels to dislodge them, and after a couple hours, I had the whole thing clear. By now, I had a much better sense of just how heavy this thing was, and considering its archaic nature, I wasn't sure that I wanted to rely on Bo alone to help me pull it out. He often helps me drag lumber, but this might be more than the both of us can handle on our own. I'd need to call in some help, so I decided to leave it for the time being. In the meantime, Bo and I relocated the two felled trees for them to be sectioned and loaded into the cart. One had already rotted through, but it looks like the other had fallen much more recently and, luckily, can be used as firewood. I asked Cadence if she'd like me to add the sections to her wood storage, and she said yes! By the end of the day, I had one tree cut and turned into firewood for the Hartzlers and the other to bring back home to my store of eco-waste. While home, I made a couple phone calls around town to see if anyone had a pair of draft horses and a larger trailer bed that could help us get this tractor out of the way. Mr. Brewers, a neighbor down the road from me, picked up and said he'd be willing to help, so I set up a time in the morning for us to get it done. The extra horses helped us get it out of the ground fast, and in no time at all, I was happily waving goodbye to the ugly machine, knowing it'd be the last I saw of it. Not half an hour later, Mrs. Hartzler got a phone call for me. 
What do you mean they can't take it? There's gotta be something salvageable about it. No? Um, okay. I can't think of anywhere else we could. Uh, do you think you could drop it off at my place? I can deal with it some other time. You will? Thank you so much. I'm so sorry for the trouble. I can bring your cut after work today. Thanks again. Bye now. Once the tractor had been uprooted, it had left a pretty deep scar in the land. I evened out the terrain best I could, but had my doubts about the grass ever regrowing, and I didn't want this bare patch of land right in front of their beautiful home. To remedy the issue, I transplanted a young sapling from the property's backwoods and added a little design to frame it. I'd say that's a massive improvement, and I can go home today feeling great about my progress. I wonder where Mr. Brewers was able to put that tractor. You're kidding me. <laughs> Oh no. Bo, do you think I could just bury it? My favorite part of these working days is when I get to switch from fieldwork to the work at home. Every evening I get a break settling Bo back into the pasture and making sure everyone is fed. Then I get a quiet evening to myself drafting blueprints for the new barn. Trying to replicate the charm of their tiny farmhouse in the form of a barn is a challenging process, but it's one that I love dearly. Designing comfortable and functional spaces for horses and humans alike is the aspect of architecture that I can put the most heart into. Would it not be for the barn ruins? I could almost say we've finished tidying things up. It's certainly looking a lot cleaner. Cutting down and stacking up the charred debris won't take me long at all. Even beneath everything, I can already tell that this old foundation is made of a beautiful stone. Goodness knows I'm grateful that the Hartzlers didn't have me building elsewhere. They're smart to want to incorporate the original footprint of the barn into the new build. You know, I never did ask her what caused it to burn down. Piles of char and ash continued to build up over the course of the day, and just as I was getting sick of the soot ignoring my gloves and packing itself under my fingernails, something strange caught my eye just by the tree line. A red fox. This wouldn't be strange at all save for its gait. As if drunk, it seemed to have a difficult time walking. Surely it knew I was there, I was staring right at it. But I'd seen enough at this point, I'm no expert, but I could guarantee the creature was rabid, and the likely thief behind the Hartzler's missing geese. I left my tools behind to put distance between it and myself and watched from afar as it stumbled into the barn ruins and slipped into the ground. Well, that confirms it. I had found the den earlier today while cleaning up, but I couldn't have guessed it had a resident. I warned Mrs. Hartzler about the creature, but assured her that I would take care of things the following day. Hmm? What? No. Me? No, 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 no. No. I'll be phoning the local wildlife service as soon as we get home. This strain of disease is no joke, and they need to be kept aware so that they can look after the rest of the area's fox population. Not only do they have the resources to take care of the fox, they should also be able to take measures in preventing future critters from settling near the barn. On the last day of week one, I sat down with Mrs. Hartzler again to discuss the blueprints I've been drafting over the past week to hear her feedback and suggestions. After approving the layout and structure, she asked, ever so kindly, if I'd be willing to take on an odd request. As a kid, Cadence remembers spending tons of time in her father's barn hayloft, and asked that I make sure to prioritize big, open windows in the roofing to let in light and air, which I had already done, but there was something she still didn't quite like about it and suggested that it may be too symmetrical. I completely agreed with her, and I can't believe I didn't see it. Emphasizing more asymmetry within the build is atypical for a barn. However, it would definitely help match the house's charm and overall feel of the property. I was scared to offer my solution of adding a windowed circular tower that led to the second level of the barn, as it was, dare I say, a bit whimsical, but I redrew the concept sketch with it added, and you should have seen her eyes light up. She loved it! We are both so excited to see this design come to life, and I'm so lucky to have a client that I can express my personal style with. Welcome to week two, exactly 13 days before the Hartzler horses come home and 14 days before Mr. Hartzler returns home to a clean, alive, and beautifully renovated property. Even through more rain on Monday and Tuesday, my spirits were sailing. I spent a little time in my workshop at home building assets and cutting down the materials I needed precision tools for, but the rest of the work I could complete on site. When the rain let up around noon on Tuesday, I got right to setting the foundations of the barn. If I wanted to keep up with my timeline, I had to get the walls up and the roof built by Sunday. Halfway through the week, I had finished the walls and was ready to get to work on the roof, but when I went to open the pallet of shingles my supplier had delivered, my heart dropped. I ordered the wrong color. 
Bo and I stopped everything on a race into town. I could arrange for the shingles to be returned and refunded, but I wouldn't be able to get new ones without at least a week's notice. I flew into the hardware store in a panic, explaining my situation to the clerk. They didn't even have enough shingles in stock to cover all that I would need, and even if they did, they're sold at three times the price. The clerk let me borrow the store phone to call my supplier, and my suspicions were correct. They'd be able to bring me new pallets and take back the old ones, but the earliest they'd get here was on Tuesday of next week. That's three days before the horses are supposed to arrive. It would be tight, but there's still a chance I can do it if I can get all of my other jobs done before then. I agreed to their terms and walked out of the hardware store stressed out of my mind. I only now realize I forgot to thank the clerk for helping me. Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday were a blur. I worked day in and day out to get everything ready in time so that when my roofing material arrived, all I had to do was install it. It was a major interruption to my process, but what is there to be done? Cadence tried every now and then to stop by and strike up a conversation. It was likely she was lonely. On Saturday, she came up to me and asked if I'd be willing to keep an eye on things if she were to go out of town. This included looking after the geese and settling the horses in when they arrived that week. With compensation, of course, though I would have done it without asking for anything extra. I said absolutely I could, and asked where she was headed. Cadence planned to surprise her husband up north and spend the rest of the week with him so that they could make the journey back home together. She'd be picking up one of her horses from the boarding stable that day to make the trip. I wished her all the best, and later that day I waved her goodbye as she headed down the driveway in a straw hat and suitcase and tow. I've done absolutely all I could for the base of the building. I'm now dependent on the roofing material to come in two days. Now is the perfect time to set up the doghouse and transport some of the stone detailing I've been working on in the background to bring the property to life. Come Tuesday afternoon, you could find me pacing the yard, anxious for the new shingles to arrive and get the old ones out of my sight. Staring down piles of your mistakes, day in, day out, it gets uncomfortable. The construction company hadn't even left before I was tearing into the new pallets and putting them up. This is one of the most complex roofs I've ever made and I was ready to make a hundred mistakes in the process. With a careful hand and my constant undivided attention, I started to see things come together. The tangible progress was something I needed to keep going, and I kept working late into that night, fueled by a battery of pure excitement. A final stretch to calling this project done and welcoming the horses home. I'm sure I looked ridiculous, crouching on top of the roof with a flashlight between my teeth and a hammer in hand like some kind of roof goblin. 24 hours before the horse's arrival, I called the roof done, and what a beauty, but I only have a couple seconds scheduled to admire it, as there is still a lot to do before the ponies get here. And there, boom, time's up. On the to-do list, we have hayloft, storage, shavings, feed, water, bedding, amenities, utilities, and done. The last and final touch is to install the horse's nameplates. We have Howdy, Shiloh, and Merrick. Now, Cadence is taking the trip up north with one of them, so we'll only have two ponies arriving tomorrow, but she didn't tell me which ones, so I've made arrangements for all three. And with that, we're ready to welcome home the horses. Shiloh and Howdy arrive the next day. The stable hand from the boarding facility helps me settle them into their pasture together and store their stuff in the barn. After a bit of time spent admiring the horses and watching them investigate their new surroundings, I spent the rest of the day cleaning up any leftovers that had built up during construction. To finish the day off, I fed the horses and brought them into their brand new barn before heading home for the night. I can't wait to see the Hartzler's reaction when they get home on Sunday. As a little celebration, I set up these cheesy banners to welcome them back. Cadence mentioned that they should be back in the afternoon, so while I waited, I walked around the property grabbing pictures to show my future clients. An hour passed, then two, and three, and I started to think they must be held up somewhere. As the sun went down, Bo and I walked home to feed the dogs, then walked back to Goosefeather Fields. All the while, we watched for any sign of the Hartzlers. By now, it was quite late. I went around to set up the animals for the night. The boarding facility had relayed to me Shiloh and Howdy's feeding schedule, so I had all that I need to take proper care of them. It wasn't out of the ordinary for these long trips to be delayed, so I thought nothing of it. Perhaps the Hartzlers had spent the night elsewhere. The following day, after completing my own morning chores, we headed back to the farm and still, no one was home. I took on chores around their property, caring for the geese and the ponies, then headed back home for the day to relax before returning by evening. Still, no sign of them.
This routine of morning and evening chores on their farm continued for two weeks. Every day, I approached with the hope of seeing someone in the driveway, and every evening I went home worried and confused. Having just worked so hard on everything, it was sad to see it in such a state. The freshly built doghouse lay vacant and empty, no lights burned in the windows, and one of the horse's stalls sat unused with Merrick's good name engraved on the wall's shoulder. I took down the welcome home banners later in the week, and on the morning of the twelfth day, I arrived to the farm to see a cart and pony parked next to the house. I breathed a sigh of relief and headed to knock on the door to welcome them home, but the lady who opened the door was a stranger to me. A short, grey-haired woman with puffy eyes and an empty expression. She needn't speak. I had known for a while that something terrible must have happened to the Hartzlers. I introduced myself and explained the situation, how I had completed the job and looked after the animals for the past little while. She responded to my questions with a gentleness that I envy and confirmed what I had been thinking. The Hartzlers would not be returning home. She thanked me for my care and promised that I'd be paid what was owed. I left her my information and offered to help with anything I could. She politely declined and explained that arrangements were already being made. I thanked her for her time, and Bo and I turned to say goodbye to Goosefeather Fields for the last time. The rest of the day stayed quiet for us. We didn't do much. In the uncertainty of the Hartzler situation, I'd been taking on smaller jobs around town to build rapport with my neighbors, but now I was back to my schedule being empty. I've had my eye on an open grove in the backwoods for a while now, and I can see myself setting up a nice trail there, adding a couple jumps. That should be fun. And Bo will enjoy being at home more. He's gotten a lot of sugar cubes these past weeks, cause he's a good strong boy. Cadence's father stopped by later that week with a check for double the amount I charged for the project. He had a chance to check out what I had done with the property and said it was some of the best work he had ever seen. He thanked me for caring for his daughter's animals and said that if I ever needed anything, I had friends in town. For the days that followed these events, I often found myself thinking about Cadence. Would things have gone differently? I could have seen us becoming friends over coffee and spending time with our horses. Thank you for being here and showing interest in my little projects. As always, this wouldn't be possible without SWEM, Star Worm Equestrian Mod, and SWDM, Star Worm Decor Mod, which are the only two mods I plan to use in the series. I am always looking for ways to make it a better experience. If you have any suggestions, constructive criticisms, or your feedback, I'd love for you to leave a comment. Interacting with you is a real privilege, and I appreciate any chance I can get to hear your thoughts. Thanks again, I'll see you next time.